Hey Fit Fam, it's Coach Rod from Team Flex. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Tampa Pro Wellness, and we're gonna look at our top five competitors, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and go over the criteria bit with you guys. Talk about the placings, why they may have landed the way they did, and what it makes a difference for, for if you are a competitor out there who's trying to compete in wellness division. A lot of people still trying to get this figured out. It could be your first show, it could be you're trying to get a pro card, it could be that you are already an IFBB pro, and I hopefully give you on this channel all the tools, the tips, things you need to know to do better on stage. And that's exactly what we do. So if you're new here and you like the video, subscribe at any point in time. And we got plenty more coming for you. All right, let's get down to it. Tampa Pro, really great lineup here in the wellness division at this event. Um, and this is our three for our top three here. Let's take a look. So right in the middle, we have Lisa here. Over here, we have a Cassandra Gillis. And then over here, we have Juliana. Okay, and this is our top three. So when we look at this, we know already this is wellness division, right? Wellness is our lower body dominant division where we can see clearly glutes, quads, everywhere. All these ladies really do have this lower body huge effect, if you will, uh, for lack of a better term. They've got a lot of muscle in the lower body. Um, and the reason that this placing kind of came down the way it did with Lisa taking the win here, I think has strictly really a lot to do with just how balanced her physique is in the lower body compared, okay? And we'll see what I mean about that when we get into it, but let's take a look. Just because it's wellness division doesn't mean we want to, you know, ignore upper body. You still need to be training upper body, building that upper body muscle. And that is going to be something judges are still looking at. They just want to see an imbalance from the upper to lower, meaning the lower body should be more developed. So when we look at this here, we can see, okay, Lisa, she's got really good shoulder development. Everything is there. I mean, this is really shoulders built to the criteria of wellness division. A little bit of roundness, a little bit of fullness, a little bit of shape can tell you lift, but it's not to the point where you're like, wow, that's that's some serious delts going on there, right? If you start getting that look, uh, then you start to look a little bit more like Cass, right? And I think this is why Cass may have placed uh, in second here versus first. She looks a little bit too symmetrical into that um, you know, lower body. She's got a lot of upper body dominance that does sort of balance out. But let's continue talking about Lisa here for a moment, and we'll talk more about Cass in a second. So Lisa's got the good shape in the upper body. Her arms are not overly developed, not over dominant. She's got good lat effect, right? I always talk about the lats a little bit from the front post. They they are something important even though your back isn't directly scored you have your hair down in this division it does actually help you in the front pose a lot of the time to have a little bit of that lat width because it sweeps the waist it looks a little bit more dramatic in that hourglass shape tiny waist got to have it and she's at very good condition here as well where you can see you know flat stomach no extra body fat but also not to the point where we're seeing deep cuts in the abs you know six packs things like this that can either help or hurt but a lot of times it does hurt competitors if you have like a chiseled six pack because it can be an indicator to judges you are just too lean, right? And this division is not about being the leanest women's division. It's about showing the soft line separation of muscle groups and really showing mostly the muscle fullness. And that's what we see in the lower body. So really good glute development, glutes from the front, as I always say on this channel. Um, her upper glute is very pronounced here. You can see that, very developed, good quad sweep action here. Not overdone, but just showing, you know, that fullness, that muscle effect of what judges want to see here. So really, really complete from the front here for Lisa and probably why it's putting her in first. Well, now let's take a look at Cass. So when we see Cass, you know, great physique overall, especially for wellness. She's really corrected a lot of her uh, midsection issue. If you guys have watched this channel for a while, we talked a lot about, you know, her midsection at some prior events and how that may have been a problem. Um, you know, she's really corrected this. Her midsection looks much tighter here. This is probably the best she's looked in a while, at least that I've seen, where her midsection is much tighter, much flatter, much smaller, and that does help. However, her shoulders are so developed here. This is like when I look at this, okay, I see a lot of muscle all around. I see a lot of good lower body wellness muscle, but I'm seeing a lot of muscle to compare to that in the upper body. And so when you have that in wellness, that becomes a no-no, okay? That becomes a no-no, ladies and gents. And that's because what ends up happening is your body starts to look more balanced, right? You start to look more like a really muscle bikini, which is all symmetry up and down versus wellness where it's clear lower body dominance. So she definitely does have good glute shape, overall quad shape. Um, she does push development overall in her physique though, I think, right? Like we can see in her quads, we got more separations, more splits, more development. 
than we're seeing in any of the other athletes here. So she really does have a lot of muscle and that in this case, I think does kind of hurt her. Keep in mind though, she's taking second. So it's definitely not a bad placing at a pro event. Um, but I think if she brings her upper body down a bit more, it's going to favor her greatly, you know, going into whatever competition she does next. Now let's take a look at um, Juliana over here. Okay, Juliana, again, with a little bit more of that shoulder size, however, not to the level of cast. Um, what I really think is going on here, she looks a bit more up and down, meaning, you know, a lot more width in the midsection really right like that's what i get right out of her first look and this looks to me to be mostly some posing so i think if she tweaks her posing just a bit that may help um really good shape in the lower body you can see there's glute development there upper glute is there uh, quad sweep is good. This is good size for her in the lower body. Um, and it does clearly look asymmetrical to the upper. However, I think with her posing, it makes her look a little bit more rectangular, not as dramatic hourglass as she could be, which would compete up against the top two a little bit better. Keep in mind though, third place, nothing to scoff at. Now let's look from the back and this is where the story is always really told because wellness division is one from the back and you get to see right here everything we just talked about, you know, the depth of the muscle, the condition, everything. You can't hide it when you get into this back close. It's just the way it is. So looking here, we can see Lisa's on point with her shoulder development again. Nice round shoulders, fullness there. You can see that rear delta even, but it's again not to the degree where it's too big, too muscular. Her lower body looks very clearly dominant in this pose right we can see her upper glute her overall glute this tie-in zone right here where this is some definite three-dimensionality effect 3d glutes popping through right there that's soft lines though not striations not deep graininess not deep cuts judges don't want to see that. They also don't want you to be too soft to where they can't really see your tie-in. So she's really nailed that conditioning look. The quad sweeping from the back is really good indicator of just how much muscle she has. And that, you know, she's a very good wellness athlete. So this is a very good physique for her. Vastly improved from prior competitions. Um, and no doubt a win going to the Olympia right here. Looking over here at Cass, again, uh, you just get a lot of a balance effect, right? I said, you know, it's more similar to bikini when you have that symmetry up and down. And from the back, I mean, this we get a lot of that bikini kind of look aside from the humongous quad she has, right? But I mean, symmetry wise, the shoulders and everything really do tend to match her glutes a bit. I think that she's going to have to bring the shoulders down some to create that separation more so and look more wellness y, if you will. However, conditioning's really good. Glute tie ins, good. Overall, good uh, shape in the glutes, development, everything is there. It's just one of those things where the upper body can overbalance. And so, for all you out there training for wellness, make sure sure you're constantly training to have that imbalance you know you got to make sure that you don't lose sight of that I, I, I think a lot of wellness athletes focus on size 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 and that becomes a mistake because if you're focusing on size 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 in the upper body then you're going to get out of it you're going to get symmetrical really is what's going to happen and that's not going to favor you so looking here at juliana again a little bit uh, of interesting posing i think she could work on that a bit more and that would help but it does look you know symmetrical here but also this is a clear point where I think her conditioning needs to be a bit tighter. You can see this in the lower body, the glutes and everything uh, in the tie in the hamstring. It's just a little bit more faded looking right. And that's tends to be the effect you get when you have a little bit more body fat. So not seeing as much of it. It's a little bit of blurred lines and uh, great size, great shape. Everything's there. Upper glute is there. Overall glute fullness. Great. But conditioning is a factor. And I think posing for her now let's pop to our fourth and our fifth in this lineup. Um, and we just continue to look down the chain here a little bit more, look at everybody, talk a little bit more about where they placed. And I think you get a little bit better idea of the criteria as we go. So here's Jasmine. She's in fourth. And then here's Samara. She's in fifth, okay? And we're gonna leave Lisa, our class winner, right in the middle, just for comparison purposes. So looking at this here, we can see um, Jasmine. Good shape, good size overall, comes in a little bit, uh, you know, just downsized compared to the other athletes. You're not seeing as much in the, in the glutes, as much in the quads, not as much of a dramatic effect in the sweep. And, you know, she's honestly kind of maybe pushing a little bit tad too tight in this front condition. You can start to see a little bit more of those abs like I was talking about, deeper lines here. Uh, it could be an indicator she just needs a little bit more fullness, and that's what I'm seeing basically really looking at this. A little bit more fullness could favor her greatly uh, up against Lisa, Cass, or Juliana where they had more mass and it looked a little bit more lower body dominant. Looking over here at Samara, 
Um, what we see here is good shape, good wellness look. Again, a posing tweak, I would suggest. I mean, this is this is a okay front pose, but it could be improved. There would be ways to enhance the taper of her waist more, pop out the shoulders just a little bit, but not in a way it was too dramatic, and really more so to emphasize the glute and the quad uh, in this position. So that's definitely a factor. Also, I think it's just a size thing, and that's typically what we see in the wellness call out as we go down is, you know, a lot of the athletes, they continue to, you know, lose lose one of two things and it's going to be size or it's going to be condition and so she's kind of needs a little bit more size I think but let's look from the back this is where we always talk about it and looking from the back I mean I don't even think I need to say too much because you're looking and you're like wow that's you can tell the difference right um, so Lisa's very depth in the glutes is just there it's 3d it's 3d it's popping out it's all the way you can see that's muscle development and fullness we don't get as much of that effect from Jasmine um, but you know honestly her upper body gets kind of lost in this position which is good in wellness in some ways and bad in others because you still want to have a little bit of shoulder shape so a little bit more shoulder shape in her rear pose I think would favor her here a bit as well as just increasing overall size you really need to get some more de uh, size on the glutes really specifically upper glute and overall glute and that would help kind of balance out her lower body as you can see Lisa's got a great lower body balance meaning all the muscles match they all have good shape together the glutes and the quads and the hamstrings all match together um, and over here Jasmine you know it looks like the glutes are kind of behind compared to the quads and the hamstrings and this is common for wellness competitors um, because a lot of wellness competitors can you know and I'm not saying this is Jasmine's case but the, a lot of wellness competitors can be training you know legs constantly training glutes constantly but they're really overactivating one muscle group versus the other, right? A lot of times I see athletes that say they can't grow glutes very much. Uh, it's because their quads are doing their glute exercises for them, right? And so it's a it's a thing you got to figure out with your training. You got to make sure you're doing the right exercise selection for you, but also proper activation drills and making sure you're doing mobility and correcting any of those imbalances that you have. Otherwise, you're going to the gym every day and you're basically facilitating a bad pattern and pulling yourself further and further out of the look of the criteria, okay? Now, uh, look over here at Samara real quick and, you know, really we can see just needs a lot more glute development. Does not have the size to compete with the rest of the call out here at that point. She's taking fifth. Great placing. Great example of of the criteria no doubt but still needs more development in my opinion here right more upper glute more overall glute just bring that size through a little a lot more a little a lot more and that'll be really good for her but overall great physique great uh call out great lineup so that is our Tampa Pro Wellness, and I think it's a really good lineup. I think it stays, uh, you know, true to the criteria in every way, and I think this is exactly where we should be seeing, you know, athletes getting rewarded. This uh, Lisa coming in here and taking first place is very on par with how Wellness Olympia is going to look this year, and it's going to be a very competitive one, definitely the most competitive one we've seen because a lot of these athletes are now starting to dial their looks better and better to compete with Francie Ellie and Issa and some of our top uh, class markers. I don't think it's just going to be the top two going back and forth at this point. I think it's really going to be uh, an Olympia where we could have wild card events. So very exciting time. Follow along with these athletes. Follow along with my channel. Subscribe. And we got a lot more coming. All right. Thanks for watching. Coach Rye is out. Thank you.